the, the storm that came through, um, you know, 8th Street, um, 7th Street, parts of 6th Street, um, and then 13th, 14th, 15th, 12th Street, um, all experienced some severe, some severe tree loss, and, and some of the houses, especially on 8th Street, took some, some serious damage, too. Um, and it was really hard to see big, mature trees come down and, you know, and open up that streetscape, expose it in a way that it, that it hadn't been for 60, 80 plus years. Um, and there were, uh, I think they're almost all maples. I, I can't think of anything that wasn't maple that came down in that, in that event or, or even in the months after, you know, as we were able to assess the damage and recognize that we needed to take other stuff out. Um, so it, it was hard to see that happen, but then it became an opportunity to begin replanting with non-maple, non-ash uh, species, which is, which is important because if we've dodged three bullets so far, um, chestnut blight, Dutch elm disease, emerald ash borer, um, then, then the only way to be prepared for whatever may come for maple is to diversify what we have. We know that uh, our public street trees are at least 50% maple, and I think if we were to inventory all the trees in the city, we'd be pressing up past 60%. Um, so we, we, have to, we have to diversify what's in our city uh, if, if, we want, if we want our urban forest to survive uh, in a viable way into the, into the next 100 years. So painful to see that happen but it becomes an opportunity to rebuild our, our forest in a, in a healthier way. Um, and my experience is that most people who lost trees in that experience were eager to get something new started. They weren't, um, they weren't frightened by it, and maybe that's because they recognize they're not gonna be there for another you know, 30 to 60 to 80 years when it becomes a problem again. <laughs>